Yeah. Welcome back to Sahara TV. This is the Talk Back segment. And I'm sitting in here for the Humble Prince. I am neither humble. I'm not a prince. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. And sitting next to me is your own Adiola Fine. Adiola, welcome back to Sahara TV. Hi, Rudolf. <laughs> See, I almost told the show. <laughs> well, you did. It's, I, I, I tried. It's your show. But but I'm not like Humble Prince or Adiola. So. Are you sure you're not? No, 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 no. I don't know how they do this. You, know, you get all these calls and people talk to you about what's going on in Nigeria and across <laughs> Africa. So, and you guys do it very well. So, um, it's an honor to stay here and for the time being and talk to you and talk to our viewers. Well, it's a privilege to get to do the callback segment with you. So, thank you very much for doing it. And um, before we go into what our viewers have been writing about our questions of the day, I want to give you the privilege and the honor <laughs> of being the first person to answer our questions of the day. We have two actually. I'm sure you're mm. aware of the fact that a lot of people have been drawn in on their way to Europe. Um, you're aware of illegal migration and all that is going on. And today, one of the questions was, the, the U European Union is considering a bill to destroy would-be migrant boats off the North Africa coast before they set sail. What should the African Union's response be? So let's do that first and get it out of the way because everybody is excited about nominating people for ministerial positions in Nigeria. But hey, let's talk about this first. What do you think? What they should do? The mm -hmm. question I have is, how would they know which of the boats is going to be the one that will take the migrants? To, hmm. to Europe. I mean, if you go to... I see your point. Yeah, how would they know? And then um, if they know, if they destroy it, huh. who would they pay compensation? I mean, how do you decide, determine these things? Um, it's, it's complicated. I don't know why they should go to that length, you hmm. know, passing a bill to... And, I mean, just to... I, just isn't, to okay, go ahead. Imagine first. this. Nigeria will sit down at home, or Africans uh, okay. will sit down and pass a bill that um, all Europeans, <laughs> European boats in, in Europe, when they are, before they leave for Africa, they, you know, it doesn't, it's not. It okay, but like don't it. you think they're trying to do this for safety purpose to limit? No, there are some, there are better things they could do. Uh, for instance, they have a, embassies in all these countries. They okay. have Navy, they in have Navy. Libya they as have, well. Yeah, so once they leave there, they can force them to turn back. Uh, right there in, in, in uh, while they're on water. Once they leave, they well, can force them to talk I back. understand. Like, no. no, they won't let them go far. I mean, this is this is not, once they leave. So, how the then did they recognize that this one is not well, that, illegal that, immigrant? That, that, way, you're no, that, that way, they will be able to see who is in, in, in the boat or in the ship and then say, okay, this mm. is, there are too many people, this, this people cannot be going saying. to buy, buy fish in the market or something. You know, they see the packages that they're carrying bags, you know, they'll be able to say that. But I don't think it's, you can go and destroy boats where they are at the mm. dock, you know. I don't think you can do that. Definitely, I'm afraid that they will probably end up, I mean, uh, destroying boats that were not meant for that Yeah, that's for, what I'm saying, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That as well. the, the question I was asking when someone raised this is, um, did they, uh, the boats that actually got there, Yeah. Um, did they let them go back? <laughs> because if they don't let them go back, I think they will, must have, they, by I, now, there won't be a lot of boats going. Well, I feel like it's not, okay, so maybe they didn't send back the boats that made it there, but what the African people that made it there, what they're going through is not funny at all. Like like the one that I recently capsized in uh, Libya next mm -hmm. to a ship, it, I watched the video, it was very, very sad. It's like those people did not even care at all, they were yeah. just filming. So oh, people were filming while the ship was yeah, going down. Well, yeah, they, sh they, they filmed the whole thing. Wow. And it took a while. Where were they were filming from? Uh, the ship. It hit, uh, well, they were trying oh, to get okay. in the ship, okay. I think. Okay. Okay. So I guess maybe the force with which it hit the oh, ship, okay. Okay. they were there already. You mm -hmm. could see the boat and the ship. Everybody was happy and excited, and suddenly it just capsized. Mm. And the unfortunate thing is most of these people don't know how to swim. And then this is ocean, so mm, yeah. it is different. Wow. Anyway, uh, we're going to read some of your responses to this question. Thank you very much for your insight on that. Before we go to the next question, this one is coming from Preya Orashio Odede, and it's the very first tweet. And he said, let the African... Uh, president stop stealing greed, corruption, and wickedness and develop the continent, beginning with the so rich Nigeria. Uh, Africans go 
to Europe, not even for government jobs, but to hustle within the right environment of stable power, security, good roads, and so on and so forth. And so forth. Uh, is this too much to ask from our leaders? So this person's response, if they can please put it on, on the screen, uh, Priya or Horatio or Dede, he's saying that the, the, the solution is not really, you know, whether they should destroy both or not, but to um, develop African countries. And before we go on, please make sure you call in. The number to call is on the screen. Uh, so please make sure you call in. Well, I think we have a caller actually. So uh, caller, you're live. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I don't know the time difference, but I'm, in, I'm calling from Oregon. Uh, I want to thank uh, you guys on Sarah TV for how you've been able to, you know, enlighten the world about uh, things going on in our election in Nigeria. And also, Randolph, I like your uh, the damages and all those stuff, you know. And But my question is, oh, I want to encourage you guys to really, you know, pass a message to uh, the president-elect that uh, we don't want them to impose ministers from different states like the other presidents used to do in the past. They bring people without pedigree, people, you know, that are, that are dubious, and make them, you know, make them ministers, impose them on the people. While we have technocrats, we have people that have, you know, good morals, that they can, technocrats that can, you know, spearhead things in Nigeria, and they just impose people. So we want you guys to please let the president know that they shouldn't impose people or choose people by themselves, people that that are that are that has questionable character. Please, thank you and God bless you guys. As Sarah reports, thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. We need to hurry up through this so that we can get to that. That's the most exciting yeah. part. Mm. But do you agree that developing African countries is the solution, not the no? That's a long-term solution, but we have to deal Why with does the it issue have to be short -term, term, though, because you can't develop Africa overnight. We've um, been on it for fifty something yeah, years. Yeah, but we've not even started. We've not started. So you need a generation. We've not started. <laughs> we've not started so we can't do what that. What have we been doing all no, this? No, we've while? been wasting time. But what we need is we need a short-term solution to this problem. <laughs> then we talk about the long term. But this is no that that that's a good uh, suggestion. But it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, so uh, this one, the next one by Sueza Chow is saying that is it too much for the EU to ask that migrants should go into Europe only through the proper channel? Well, he's saying, he's saying that it is too much to ask that uh, migrants should go to Europe only through the proper channel. No, he said, is it too much? And he's saying that this question is inciting and he's suggesting to, he su suggests that it should, uh, he's suggesting that we should pull it down. And this is a white person, obviously, or somebody who uh, is enjoying Swiss Europe. Suiza Charles. Yeah, I, I, I mean, He has a picture of a, can you please put up his tweet so that people, okay. It doesn't look oh, like okay. a white person okay. to me, unless okay. he just used Okay, but he's, he's okay, obviously so enjoying he said, he, so. Is it too much for the EU to ask that migrants go into Europe only through the proper channel? Yes, a proper this channel. This question is inciting, and I suggest it should be pulled that, down. Yeah. Listen, listen, the fact is this. People know there's a proper channel to get to Europe, mm -hmm. and they know that they are not going to be given visa to go to Europe, <laughs> and they need to get away from. But you never know if you don't try. No, 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 no. they've tried. Most of them have tried. Uh, there are a lot see. of people in Nigeria who go through the, the, the Sahara <laughs> the Desert. Oh, they, wow. they, if some of them, if you see the passport they leave behind when they die, you see that they've gone to many embassies and, and they've, they've been, been denied, denied visa. visa. So mm. they try to go by by any means necessary. So wow. So okay. it's easy for someone like this. Probably he's in Europe or somewhere. In the West saying this this kind of thing. I think um, mm. it's more than what it is. I see. So the next one from No Adam Siliki says, "I'm against the move. Europe should review their immigration policy. That's all." I mean, they, they, what, what do we want it to do? The, uh, yeah, exactly. The, there are so many issues there. Uh, the fact that we call them migrants is also a problem because mm. we, if we call them refugees, then they will be under a different law. Okay. And it will require some of these European countries to accept them. Okay. So this is part of politics of language. So there's a way people say they are migrants. So they are people who are just running away because of hard time. But mm. some of them are actually refugees. They will die That's if true. they stay in, in Libya, in, their in country. some of their countries, Syria. And the last one I will read on that, that is from Chinedu Modest, Jesse Waters. And he says, African leaders should just develop their countries. EU is on the right direction. So 
that goes with uh, no what i want to know is for, for africans who think it's okay for eu to come and destroy boats in africa mm -hmm. and tomorrow if they want to destroy homes so if for instance mm. they say that terrorists in uh, terrorists in europe are from africa and they want to destroy their homes in in africa will you say it's okay mm. for them to come and bomb the homes I in see. africa so there are questions serious all questions. right so please don't forget to call in the number to call is on the screen and this is the most exciting part of our segment <laughs> the question the second question of the day which is who are the people that you expect the president-elect, that is Buhari, to nominate for, pre for ministerial posts, and which ministries should they lead? You want to tell us who you have in mind first, Rudolph? No, I've not been, I've not been, no, I've not been thinking about anybody. It doesn't really matter to me who they are. It doesn't matter to who you? They no, no. What, they, they're ruling your country. No, no, this is, they, there, should, there should be a process. One guy talked about that process, that he doesn't want the to impose people to impose on the president who should be mm. that process is what but we need to look at the people mm. no no he's talking about i think the way it works now in nigeria is that governors of states governors from states uh -huh. will, will decide we nominate people and, and you right. know, let's talk Hold about that, that. Yeah, Let, yeah. let's take this call victor from california hi you're live on sahara tv please go ahead yes good afternoon good afternoon um good i like your outfit oh, thank you thank you um, Okay. Also, hopefully you guys will put the full video of uh, Sowere. I think you guys had a snippet of him speaking at some meeting or some uh, Yeah, panel. he was a th um, panel. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, he was very eloquent, and I would like to have a full video of that. Okay. Well, in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, Africans going to Europe, I think it's, it should be that that fall should fall on Africans. We have all this stealing, thieving presidents and governments. All the monies that they've um, deposited in Switzerland, somehow maybe the Africans or some you know, Africans, patriotic, patriotic Africans should just tell Switzerland to return all that money. All that money could be used to resettle these folks that are trying to get you uh, Europe. It's not Europe's fault. It's Africa's fault. That's, mm -hmm. that's my take on that. In terms of um, uh, members of uh, Buhari uh, government, they should do away with this regional uh, crap. Mm -hmm. Just elect people that are as clean as Buhari, can declare their assets to every penny, every cobble, and that would uh, suffice. Um, this regional stuff is just, is just nonsense. As long as they're patriotic and they're clean and they can do the job, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. Thank you very That's much. It. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The regional him. thing, you agree? It's actually about the states. The issue is about the states. Um, okay. and, and people want to feel that they are part of that government. They don't want to be left out. So, for mm -hmm. instance, because we have ethnic diverse population, some people might feel that, oh, be there are no Yoruba people in this administration or there are no Igbo people. So that's what they try to solve by saying mm. that they distributed across the state. But that, that's, that's not a bad thing in, in itself, you know. But I think the problem is that the governors will now decide on who is the friend that they will send there and whatever deal they have with the, that person. But I, I also agree that you take whoever can do the job, but then there would be issues. People would be like, oh, it's only... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. But the thing is that every state should be able to find credible people and talented people and to go... And you think the credible people would the, be the that's ones the that problem. would be... That's the problem, because of the process. Nominated in the state? Yeah, that's the problem. That, that process is not... It's not also, right. how does it work, really? You said the governors are the governor ones that would give the, the names of nominate, people? Nominate people, yeah. Oh, so if the governor doesn't nominate you, you cannot be nominated? Now, what I don't know is what happens if the governor is not a member of the APC, uh, the party in power. In that uh -huh. case, in that case, maybe the party in that. What in if that the state. president spotted somebody and just were like, "Hey, I want this person." What if he spotted you? Yeah, I was about you to think about you. To take <laughs> off Ruben about his job. No, no. It, I think the president has also uh, there is room for him to nominate people. But one oh, of the things that one good. of the things that that happens is that he will still have to go through the state and say. You know, you can't have a state to have more than more than three members of the cabinet. I think there's a way they distribute it. There's a limit. So I think there's a I limit. So that. yeah. Okay. So let's read some of your answers. And please don't forget you can always call in to tell us who you think should be the minister of what in Nigeria. And uh, the number to call is on the screen, so please make sure that you call in. Uh, so the next comment is by Emmanuel Ekeruche. I um, hope I'm saying this correctly. That's number 550. Can please put it up? Thank you very much. And he's suggesting about Tunde Raji Fashola for Minister of Power or Works. What do you think? I mean, there, there's this... Uh, Raji Fashola. That's, Fashola. The, that's, the, that's the governor of... Um, former State. governor of Lagos State. The current one. He's still the governor. Well, yeah, he's still yeah. the governor. So... 
What do you think about him well, being Minister Well, most likely, of he, power? his name will be, will be on the list somewhere. But mm. I don't know about the particular ministry that he might end up getting. Okay. But the way it works is, I mean, it doesn't really matter. What we want is people who will be able to run a ministry. Okay. And uh, you don't have to know a lot about that ministry. Uh, but if you do, that it helps. You know? I see. Yeah. So uh, the next one by Akani Olugbe Miga says that we have many Nigerians who have, whom we've never had of their names. God that gave them the wisdom to nominate or Simbajo as vice president will guide guide them to select ministers. I know many Nigerians are thieves. They only want to steal money. There's no room for that. So what do you think? I would love also to hear of names that we've not heard of because I feel like we're recycling this. You know, some people have been in in government since the 60s. Mm. They were governor and then senators and then, you know, ministers. No. Yeah, but it's also about trust uh, for the president and for the Some people in the party. Some of those people are actually not trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a new caller. Okay. Caller your life, please go ahead. Yeah, um, good evening, or I mean, it's here, evening here in Germany. My name is Timothy, I'm calling from Munich in Germany. Um, I want to say, first of all, thank you to don't worry of Sahar reporters, Rudolf and Adiola, you all helped in educating my ignorance. Mm. Um, I just wanted to add something to say um, to Rudolf and to Adiola. I watch your shows. Um, Rudolf does this um, comedy skit and you also. But I was, I, I've been asking, you know, since Rudolf somehow looks like Jonathan and plays the role of, um, <laughs> you know, tries to mimic what Jonathan does. Now, in the case that Buhari becomes somebody, I mean, when Buhari does well, I mean, I mean when he appoints the right ministers and um, everything is going on fine, what would Rudolph be able to do then? What would, how would he mimic Buhari? Would he look for another Dr. Damages or would he change the show to <laughs> Dr. Budegis? Okay. And then to add your to you, you're always, um, you mostly report about the ills of Africa, country to country, especially Nigeria. And the case that Nigeria, Buhari, you know, kind of miraculously improved a lot of stuff in Nigeria. What would you be able to show in your, what would you present in your shows then? What would you show? Would you start talking about Thank you uh, very much. how many clothes you wear or something? <laughs> so that's, that's just my take. I was Chimezi. wondering what your next, the next step for the both of us would be. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. You so you, you want to answer that question? <laughs> no, my one is very simple. I okay. answered it in the last episode. Good. You know, so we have our character <laughs> ready for Buhari. Whenever he missteps, we will bring him in to talk about that. And we have, um, what was the other question? I, in, in terms of, in terms of um, the con continent and, and what we see, there are politicians who will give you materials. It's not you that you're not making it up. They, they're actors in the field mm -hmm. and they will do some stupid things. And of course, that's your material. So we don't make it up, they, they give us the material. Okay, so uh, thank you for asking the question. <laughs> uh, my, I think, my answer was also given in my last episode. My last episode, Barry said something that, you know, I don't quite agree with about his attitude towards fighting Boko Haram when he won compared to before he won. And I, I talked about that. So I wouldn't be talking about how many clothes he's wearing, or maybe you are referring to how many clothes I'm wearing. You know, that would not be issue. So long as there are politicians, so long as there is a government, there will be news. Uh, don't forget we're talking about news. So there will always be news to talk about. It doesn't always have to be bad things. It could be good things. When Jonathan did the trains, I talked about that. So uh, don't worry, there will always be materials to talk about. And we have another caller. Kola, you're live. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, you are speaking. Uh, it's Kamal Uddin Kabir speaking. Thank from you. From United Kingdom. Uh, actually, my own view is uh, um, I'm solidly behind uh, Professor Sam David West, who is uh, uh, currently been uh, was a former was a former. Um, Minister. Petroleum Minister of Nigeria. Hmm. And uh, I think uh, the, the, the man has been keeping himself up to date about the industry. And uh, he know really what is really going on because he was even proposing 14 era for a liter, which is, I think, uh, should be okay because uh, petroleum is one of the things that will touch every uh, Nigerian, especially yeah. those at the rural area. I was one time in Nigeria and um, I was like, I have the chances to 
go into all local villages and all sort of uh, kind of uh, areas, and uh, people were really suffering. But I think reducing petroleum pump price will actually go a long way in improving the economy. So I will solidly like um, give a, um, a recommendation to Paul Prof, uh, Professor Tom David West, okay. among others, to be. Thank you very yeah. much. What do you think? Yeah, uh, a lot of people are a lot of people have been saying and, that, by and, the way. And his name is on the list of the transition committee that oh, okay. Buhari set up. The question is, uh, it's not about whether, and, and of course, there's a statement he made this week where he said that the 40 naira thing was his idea, not Buhari's idea. So I think he tried, he's trying to distance, separate his opinion from that of Buhari. I thought Buhari said that as well, that that's no, no, his Buhari idea, did, no, not... Buhari, Buhari, yeah, yeah, Buhari, yeah, said, Buhari that said it's not my idea. Yeah, but people confuse the two, so, yeah. so, so I think he, he might he might make it, uh, depending on how... I, I, I mean, I would love petrol to be 40 naira. Yeah. Imagine the, that but, kind but of life. I don't think it's realistic. Uh, Buhari, I'm not saying they, that they he should be They asked that question to Buhari, and he said that when we get there, we see. One of the things Why we saw today... Why is it not today, realistic? It's not, because one of the things we saw today is that they, they reported in, the, in Punch that two... Uh, Oil marketers are threatening not to uh, import. Nimble. So we don't need oil marketers. That's the main. No, but but you don't. It can be. We're not making. We're not producing. So the we form. have to be producing. Yeah, it. and it, it takes time. <laughs> so if we are producing it, though, forty. Yeah, if, 40 yeah, if we're producing realistic. it, yeah, we, we can make it up. All right, yeah. let's take this call. Call your life, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hi. Yes, I just. Uh, I'm just watching a program right now, and. Uh, I've been following your discussion every now and then. I personally want to have watched all that is going on in Nigeria for the past uh, two, three, since the election. Uh, my personal suggestion is that if I'm to suggest any figure that will make up the cabinet, I just have two people I so admire in mind. Uh, Professor, Professor Shah Soludo and Professor Pato Tomi. Yeah. I think uh, I will want those people to really make the cabinet. I doubt both of them. Okay. Preferably, right. I would prefer to say the chefs a little bit. Thank you. What do you think? Um, I mean, I think uh, the names I, come up all the time. Yeah, I think um, I like Charles a little too. Yeah, <laughs> Especially that if, article that I, he wrote that time. I don't know time. if I like him. I, I <laughs> I'm not saying he should be made minister yeah. or not, but I love his guts. Yeah, but but when he was there in government, what did that's he do? True. That's he that's was, my question. He when he CDN was with, with Janet Wade uh, or Bassanjo, you know, what are the things they did under Bassanjo, they, they turned out not to be the right things. Hmm. So that's my question with, with him. Part of Tommy, I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I think he's fine. I think gentleman. he should be on the committee that scrutinizes the list and the suggestions. <laughs> Most of the people of... on the committee are going to end up being the minister. <laughs> so that's something else that you should know. I see. Yeah. So let's read on. The next comment is from Honorable Uguaja Kings. And he says Adam Oshiomole should resign as governor of Edo State and join Buari as the minister of works. The man personally supervises his project even by 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> not a good thing. Nah, nah. Or, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, but I don't think he needs to resign uh, as governor because as governor, you are an executive. You have control of budgets that you won't get as minister. So you're talking I don't about think, money. Yeah, you know, in terms of control and influence, he can make more changes as a governor if he's actually good. I'm not saying he's good. Uh, compared to uh, what he could do as a minister, there are a lot of people who I can see. So do he that could job. have, he could do more as a governor. Yeah, as a governor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next one by UB the Prince of Air Fizzy. Wonderful name, by the way. Please put him up because his comment is really funny. Well, maybe not that funny, but he said that boy that trekked from Lagos to Abuja should be the minister of sports. I believe he's referring to the man that, that trekked from Lagos to Abuja because Buhari won the election another, and he spent 20 days. Yeah, another one just left Yola going I to know, Abuja. I know, another one left. I'm I thinking think about should... going from New York <laughs> to Abuja. If that would mean... I think I should walk <laughs> from Manhattan to Brooklyn or something. No, no, New York to Abuja. And let the world know. If not, I have to pass Brooklyn. I will <laughs> think about that. <laughs> so what do you think about making him a minister? I mean, he got to meet a lot of, I, I really admire what he did, by but, the but way. But there are still questions about how he did that. Um, did he Nigerians. use Okada, the way they said? Nigeria. <laughs> the man said he was walking, ham rubbers gave how? him water. <laughs> <laughs> you love no, me. no. I, 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 what I, met her, I'm Robert I just didn't want to touch this story. But, but that's, that's the failure of the media. If somebody, we've been hearing that somebody has been traveling by foot. I think they tried Abuja. following him a little bit. What happened? I they think it, it took a while before everybody got to know about it. Yeah, but he, by the time gone. they got, yeah, by the time, even if it was the last four days, five mm. days, they should have followed him. 
and you, do a documentary. So you think he, he, I don't know. He I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Okay, so but does this qualify for him to be a minister? <laughs> He's <laughs> of sports. The, the we admire the guy, by yeah, the way. But the, the first question is, sh will he be able to recite the national anthem? You remember oh. there was a minister that didn't... So. No, no, I'm just saying. There was a minister that, by the time you so go to the, the Senate... So that's the criteria you <laughs> By the time you go to the anthem. Senate, they will ask you to recite the national anthem. It's not just about whether you worked. That can be learned. But I guess the main issue is, just striking from one place to the other doesn't really demonstrate that <laughs> your, your leadership skill or, you mm -hmm. know, something that you've done. We have another caller. Caller your life. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Mohammed. Welcome to Sahara TV. Mohammed. Hello. Okay, I think we lost Mohammed. Sorry, call back. Um, the number to call is on your screen. Please make sure you call back. But I'm, I'm happy that he got to meet Buhari himself. He got to meet a lot of kings. People gave him envelopes with money in it. Uh, is, he, is he walking back or is he going to fly back? You know, no, that's the serious questions you need to ask yourself. He's a celebrity now, and you know, we, we all admire what he and did. How long do you spend writing <laughs> Keeping It Real instead he of said, you to take a walk from <laughs> anyway? He said it's because we need a change in Nigeria that, you know, he had vowed that if we get this change, he would do this. I like, I like that. I like that. I like the fact that we now have people like who are thinking outside the box. No, it's a good yeah. thing. It's a good thing. They no. do this all the time in yeah. other parts other of the parts world, of the by world, the way. Yeah. It's, it's just in Nigeria that we're like, uh, no, it's a good if thing. this were enough of the world, the guy would be a hero. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a, a model. Like, what I, what I just don't know is making Now, I don't know if, if the, the person should, should have... Um, I, I don't know if the, the guy that left Yola should... Have left you like because, because I, I don't I'm hoping and that not everybody people, will start living. Sure. You can be sure more people are living where they are. Okay. All right, we have another caller. Color your life, please go ahead. Hello. Hi, welcome to Sahara TV. Please go ahead. Hi Daniel. Oh, we lost Daniel again? Okay, sorry. Call back again. But I'm just afraid of everybody deciding to leave for Abuja by, <laughs> by you know, by trekking. I, I hope that people won't start leaving from or you're from Ibadan from... It's 20 days. It's, yeah. it's not worth it. Let's see if this second person will get as much coverage as this first person because mm. I can just imagine some students will be like, let's do it as yeah. well. Because and then it is no longer special. Mm -hmm. So the next comment is from Yusuf Musiliu. And he's saying that he nominates Amechi as the secretary, maybe secretary general? No, secretary to the federal government. Oh, secretary to the federal what? government. Yeah. And then Fashola for Minister of Works, Ungige for Minister of Culture and Tourism, and Abike Dabiri for Minister of Information. It would be good to ask him how did they determine the portfolio <laughs> they were assigned someone, you know? Like for instance, why Maybe is Fashola why is Fashola go okay works? Why is Ngigi going to culture for instance? I want to know, does he dress well? <laughs> I don't know the is criteria. it about dressing I, I'm well? Just saying, the Minister of Culture and Tourism, I'm, I'm thinking this is the person that will make sure that Nigeria becomes, you know, a, a, a better tourist re -brand center. Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. rebrand Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Make sure that places are well, you know, like we have tourist centers, everything is in place that uh, visitors would. Oh, we have a map. The GPS is working in Nigeria, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, I no, know. for real, GPS is working now. And the now. streets, do they change the names every day? Or, you know? I don't know, but I, I just know that GPS is working. Yeah. Someone called me yesterday that he used GPS. Okay. So GPS does work in Nigeria, Rudolph. Okay. okay. All right, um, so this next person. There's a new caller, I think. Oh, we have a caller. Caller, please go ahead, you're live. Ah, okay. Hello. Hi. Um, Yes, it's about 8 o'clock in, in the United Kingdom. It's about 8 or 7, I guess. Okay. And my name is Chide. And Hi. nice in the, this beautiful lady called uh, Mr. Diola mm. and uh, Dr. Damage oh. as well. And it's nice joining this show. Oh. And I've been trying to, you know, to be on the segment since the time of uh, Nigeria Decides, whereby you call it, you do like a Skype. Mm. So I've been trying and trying, but, you know, at least it's good now. Yeah. So I have Yay. the opportunity to talk with you guys. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank I'm you. telling you, you're Thank doing you. so much. Because without you guys, I would like to you, throughout the whole election period, uh, you, you gave us, you know, news. It, it seems that on social media, you might not know, but I think if you follow Facebook and other social media platforms, you will see that people are actually waiting for you guys. Whatever you say is what people will follow, regardless mm. of what we get from Nigeria. But 
it is your platform, it's your network that is giving us like information. Even when I call my parents back home, it is what they say that, ah, okay, you know what, tune to Sahara, whatever they say there, I think is what you have to follow. <laughs> and so, so beautiful. And I'm also proud of uh, uh, Mr. Shawure because we are, we are the same, we are, we are from the same Unilag, which is a cockeye. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we are cockeye. It's good to have someone like him, like a role model, and he's doing fantastically well. And also, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but at least I just, you know, tuned in. I checked my Facebook and I see that, yes, you can call it. Yeah. Oh, and I could see that you're you. talking about. Um, we're yeah, we're, we're getting about, names uh, of. That we're getting names of who uh, people think should be ministers and the positions they think they should hold. Oh, brilliant. Um, actually, I know that uh, the man there, which is the general, I think will give us the best of the best. We shouldn't even start debating on who should hold a particular post. Okay. But I know he has been studying Nigeria, uh, uh, Nigeria as a country for the past time years since the time he's been trying to become the president. And mm. now maybe after three or three or ten, now that he's there now, he's almost there in some few weeks from now, he will be, uh, how will I put it? It will be, uh, it will have an office, and the inauguration will go ahead. But I know that with the team working with him at the moment, they will give us the best. We just need to uh, keep praying for him as an Thank individual. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, he no, said why will give us the best. People, people believe that. And, and Buhari uh, is saying that um, the same kind of thing, that you know, they will try to give the best. And okay. we hope. But there will be some bad people. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, there, there has to be. And that's, that's the way they go. There has right? that's, to uh, be? That has to be. That's the way. What about, OK, the number to call is on your screen, by the way. Please call any moment. But what about, was it not in China, I forgot which country, that some minister, uh, there was some error. It wasn't even the minister that committed the error. And the minister resigned. So in a, in a society like that, I can hardly imagine uh, ministers that wouldn't work hard. No, you know? I mean in any any part of the world, if you have twelve people, there will be someone who will slack, and and that Judas. that will happen. So the question is, let's hope that um, majority of the people that we're going to hear their names will be competent people and okay. people with integrity, and that's that's what we hope for. All right. So you help me with this next person, Mohammed M. Usman, because he, he has a long list, okay. and um, if they can please put it up. He said latest on appointment. He said the secretary. To the federal, federal government. government should be Rotimi Amici. Okay. We talked about that already. He said the Minister of Justice and AGF should be Fashola. Mm. He said Minister of Abuja should be Hussein Diko. Yeah. You said? No, yeah. that, that, I mean, what I'm saying, I've seen that list. That list okay. is all over, all over the net. Um, that, that's not credible. But most of those people are people associated with this uh, APC. So that makes oh, sense. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. We have another caller. Caller, your life, please go ahead. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, I just want to thank... Hi, how are you? Good. I just want to thank you and Rudolph. I mean, he's been great listening to you guys. Thank you. Uh, you. I know it's very difficult for you guys to understand your impact or realize uh, the impact that uh, you are having all over the world. Thank you. Uh, it's just incredible just to watch you guys, what you are doing. I mean, you've changed the whole environment. Now, if you are corrupt, you know that uh, that corruption could be, you know, could be on Sahara tomorrow. Mm. So that has never happened in Nigeria, and uh, it's just a it's just a remarkable thing that uh, for the past few years, people like myself could come to your to your website to you know to just send, you know. Thank and you very I feel much. Myself as one of those who that uh, <laughs> you know that uh, we all feel like we contributed. Mm. To what happened in Nigeria, even though we don't live in Nigeria, yes, yeah. you know we, you know why Jonathan was paying those uh, ERAT, uh, probably millions of uh, naira. Mm. You know we do it uh, in our home and uh, offices for free. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so it's just incredible that uh, you guys are there. I just want to say that. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I only have two more comments to read before we go. But this next one by Kodri Oyejide Oyejide says. There's a name there that I want you to talk about. It says Obi Ezekwesili should be the Minister of Finance. Um, well, her name is also on some of the list uh. I've been seeing, yeah. Uh, but the question is whether she wants to join the government or not in the past. According to her, she said that uh, she was offered something 
by Jonathan's people that she and rejected. She yeah, rejected. so the question is, I don't know where she I, is. It would be that. interesting to see her become the Minister of Finance if that should happen, because I remember Ngozi saying that her career has been stalled by... <laughs> you remember that time but, when the, the current Minister of Finance said, Obi is exclusively said, career is no longer, you know, mm. it's, it's short-lived or something. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think Ngozi would remain the Minister of Finance. No, no, I don't think anybody would remain. <laughs> I don't think anybody from what the... What about Koro that was just appointed? Like last yeah, week. Yeah, he's turning his hand over not now. <laughs> Whatever he did for those days. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the last comment is by Rashid Velo, and he says, I don't know and I don't care to speculate, okay? <laughs> so long as appointees to the ministerial office are competent, credible men or women of fortitude and integrity who can move our nation's affairs away from its current tragic state caused by GEJ and its criminality inept friends. Wow. Now, this is somebody that I say, I don't know and I don't care. And you know, for most Nigerians, they could kill us because they feel like no matter what they say, their voices would not be heard. Mm. So we have another caller. Let's take that quickly. That would probably be our last call for the day. Caller, you're live. Please go ahead. Oh, uh, hello, Adeola and uh, Hi. Rudolf. Hi. Uh, I'm so happy to talk to you today. Mm -hmm. I'm one of your lover. Um, keep it real and Dr. Damages. Thank Good job. You. Okay. Um, I think I think we have a lot to do about Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria, we voted for changes, and that changes is what what uh, almost every Nigerian are looking for right away. Uh, looking at the list that has been circulated, I think we need to give some youth some chances in this government. Mm. Okay, at the realm of the affair, we have old people, uh, the president and the vice president, and possibly many old people will still coming. But now I will, I will be happy if we have people under 50 on the list. We have many, we, we have many of them that are good that can make Nigeria very proud. Mm. Uh, I don't see anything wrong if Shure or Moyele can even be part of the list. Someone that I've done, uh, I believe he did much about the changes we have today. Uh, and we have millions of Nigerians, both home and abroad, that can do this. So I will be happy if more young people are given chance to exhibit their talents. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. What do you have to say about that? I'm, I'm waiting to see who the minister of, is it youth? The youth minister, as well as the minister of sports. Like, there was one time we had this youth minister or something, and he was in his, he was in his 50s or, or late 40s or something. And we were like, he's just a manager. He's not supposed to exhibit that. No, but that. for real, it would be good to see No, young people, young that's people. a good point. That's a good point. And also people that we've not been seeing their exactly. names in, in, uh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah, I heard that in Uganda, like, there were so many 30-something mm. in the president's cabinet. Mm. But, um, but he, he just talked about Shore being the minister. What did you think about that? What do you think about that? He didn't say anything. You what, just, what do you, you think about the that? You're not the man. The man was I specific. Mean, I'm not sure. I cannot speak for him. And, you know, so what do you think about that? Since you're friends with Shore, you've met, I've never met him. I know you've met him before. No, I did. So. I've not met him is he in up, the last... Is he up to 20? What, no. Like, how old is he? No, there's no age limit, actually. Oh, okay. I don't think there's age in terms of being a minister. Okay. okay. Mm. Let's hear so what You've is. met him, right? Yeah, I met him. So we have one more caller. And I, I've just been told he'll be the last caller for the day. Caller, you're very lucky you're the last caller. <laughs> Please go ahead. You're live on Sahara TV. Okay. Uh, my name is Mamadou. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Yeah, I'm just calling about uh, the change that happened in Nigeria. Okay. I'm not from there. I'm from Gambia, but... I oh, was a Gambian in the house! Hi, yeah. go ahead. Because I, I follow you, so you are grown up, and I enjoy it all the time. Oh. That's the news I get from Africa most of the time. Thank no, no, you. Let, me, let me ask you. Let me ask him a question. Yeah, He's from go ahead. Gambia. He ha we have a question for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, um, our, our former president, Obasan, just said that other African countries are happy that Jonathan uh, was defeated by Buhari. Uh, were you happy about that? Yes, because I think he was very ineffective because he cannot control his people and they do everything. And we look up to Nigeria mm. for West Africa, wow. for wow. anything that goes around in the continent. Wow. Because they did a lot in Sierra Leone and other countries. So if they don't have a good leader, 
the whole of West Africa suffers. That's what wow, I think. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. We really appreciate. Uh, you are yeah. Thank you. Wow. That that's huge. Yeah. Sometimes so I, I'm surprised. For the first time, I would say Obasan <laughs> must be right. <laughs> I didn't know that. Please. I could ever say that. A lot of Africans <laughs> were following that Nigerian election yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, since we took that last call, I want to read just two more comments, if possible. Uh, and this is number 14 by Celestine Nwaibo. I just want to read the first part of his comment. He said, Amechi should be made ambassador of Nigeria to either Iran, <laughs> Iraq, Afghanistan, or Pakistan. Yeah. Why would he say that? No, I don't know. You need to ask him. These are places where, you know, I mean, I mean Iran, people, no. Iraq, Afghanistan, no, or Pakistan. If you're an ambassador, Nigeria's ambassador to Iran, it's a good position. It's a good position? Iraq, yeah, it's a good position to start your career. With all the... With Afghanistan, you, you are secure. With all that is going on? Because, have you heard that ambassador okay, died? I, it sounded to me as if the guy is trying to get Amechi killed. But maybe, well, maybe that was, that's a wrong uh, assumption. Anyway, um... Also, the next one by Olamide Badu. I mean, the next one by Adeban just says Olamide Badu should be made minister for entertainment and enjoyment. Whiskey should be made minister for women affairs. The <laughs> video should be made minister for swag and fashion. And Don Jazzy should be minister for every, every, and the godfather of young shall grow. And so on and so forth. You think that this administration will involve. People like, you know... <laughs> not, um, not at that level, but I think at other yeah. levels, yeah, they probably Chai, do that. I, I don't know if this person is trying to say that Whiskey likes women or something, but... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the very last one that I would read for today... Okay, second to the, to the last one. Okay. This is by Mon Ibrahim, and he says, Madam Patience, Jonathan should be made Minister of, speak of Speaking. <laughs> uh... Any comment? No, 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 no. She's she's, she's happy she where should, she is. She's happy where is she? I don't know. But you, she's happy she's where she is. She's holding a position. She's the what is she again? The president of the African uh, First Ladies. N she handed no. that over. She just handed that over. Oh so, really? Yeah, yeah. But she's also something in. Uh, no, she resigned from that. Oh really? Yeah. Also, oh, they can make her. She has a, She now. has no job. She has so, no job. So she is free. You get it? Why is hearing us? She's, uh, she's up. Night, and yeah. the very last one I will read is from Oluwa Adeni Yomojesu, and he says, I nominate myself for Minister of Social Media Affairs. Damn. Yeah, but she was sent, oh, is it she or he? It's a he. Okay, sending it to the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Oluwa, in case you are watching us, you know, send your, your resume, nominate yourself. It's too late now. Don't be it's afraid. too late now. <laughs> the people who are serious, they've said it's too late. You should have nominated yourself a long, a long time, time ago. ago. You know, and if anybody else is watching, feel free to nominate yourself. Rudolph, <laughs> nominate yourself, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's the end of our callback segment today. We really appreciate everybody that called in. Make sure you call in again next week. And thank you, uh, Mr. Rudolph Okonko, for joining us. I am enjoying this. Oh, you are? It's, let me say, Humble Prince retiring from this vicinity. Oh, so you want to come back? <laughs> yeah, I, like I mean, this. we can have you again like, next like, week. Oh, Just oh, You're still on trial period. <laughs> It takes time, and then we'll talk about I'll payment see how and contract and all Exactly, that. and, you know, yeah, that's good. I like it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you again next week. Stay tuned. We have much more to come.